Wouldn't it be nice if one week I had to come on and say, you know what, guys, I got nothing. Or at least if I was just barely able to scrape together three or four stories at the last minute after digging deep into the news cycle. As opposed to digging through the 50 worthy stories and trying to decide which three or four are the worst. Well, we sure as hell didn't manage that this week. We'll start off in metropolitan Milledgeville, Georgia, at that city's most prestigious upscale retail outlet, Walmart. Local resident and Walmart shopper Brittany Cartrett is accusing the store of abusing state law after the pharmacist slash moral philosopher slash medical appellate on duty refused to fill her prescription for misoprostol, citing what's known as the conscience clause. Now, for the record, misoprostol can be used in conjunction with another drug to induce an abortion, but that wasn't why Cartrett was getting it. She'd had a miscarriage and it was prescribed to help her avoid a more invasive procedure to remove tissue in the future. Of course, that shouldn't matter because some judgmental Jesus freak behind the counter at a Walmart shouldn't be the supreme arbiter of a woman's personal medical choices and or needs. But according to the dumbass laws in this state, it does matter. So here's my advice as both a Georgian and a woman. If you have that problem again, come back to the same register with a six pack of wire hangers and say, looks like I'll have to settle for plan C. Trust me, they'll get you your fucking medicine. And from Georgia, we'll move to the progressive bastion of Tennessee, where state representative and woman who Bart Simpson probably asked for at Moe's Tavern, Sheila Butt, moved to table the rape and incest exemption from a new abortion law because rape and incest are, quote, not verifiable, end quote. The law itself is already plenty fucked up and would require a woman to wait 48 hours and get psychological counseling before the state would allow her to terminate a pregnancy. So basically, they're saying that the desire to exercise biological autonomy is a mental disorder, and these feticidal maniacs need help, even the ones who are carrying inbred rape babies. Her justification, of course, is that women evil enough to murder babies are certainly evil enough to pretend they were raped by their uncle to satiate their bloodlust. And of course, it just wouldn't be this week in misogyny if we didn't talk about some ass for brains host on Fox News. This week, the honor goes to Rachel Campos Duffy, who explained that the only way to counteract Muslim terrorism is with a manlier version of Christianity. That's right, the sausage fest of Christianity, the religion with three god figures that all have dicks, needs to be more manly. Part of her tirade consisted of a convoluted and tortured analogy about young Catholic men going to Rome to join an anti-Muslim crusade that was presented in such a way that you really couldn't tell if she was for or against. She then went on to demonstrate that she only kind of knows what the term root cause means. Quote, the root cause is reforming Islam, and it's also that Christianity needs to offer a more robust, manly, not feminized version of Christianity. End quote. Way to tongue rape the English language, lady. And finally, a quick note on a Hasidic website whose blatant sexism actually did the world a favor this week. While I don't agree with the motivations that inspired the ultra-Orthodox news site Kakar HaShabbat to airbrush Kim Kardashian out of a picture of her husband and the mayor, I'm still kind of hoping the idea of airbrushing Kim Kardashian out of photos catches on. And until next week, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath.